Hi friends, my name is Clint Hoagland and this is Creating Electronic Music with Chuck. In the last video, we saw where to get Chuck and how to make sure it was installed properly. I also recommended you install Audacity and VS Code and showed you where to get those. In this tutorial, we're going to create our first program in Chuck and we're going to make our first sound. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing you want to do is you want to go to your start menu. I'm going to talk like I'm on Windows the whole time. Uh, on Mac or Linux, you'll know the equivalent of that, I hope. Uh, I'm going to go to what's called the mini article. The mini article is what's it called an integrated development environment for Chuck. What's an integrated development environment? That means it gives you all the tools that you need in order to use the language that you're talking about, in this case, Chuck. So the mini article is such a thing for Chuck. It provides you a code editor, which is this window, a console window, which gives you information about what's happening right now with Chuck, and then a virtual machine monitor, which shows you the virtual machines and threads that are running in the background. You, you don't need to know much about that right now. We'll go into that in more depth later. All I need to know right now is to actually use Chuck, you need to start a, vir a virtual machine so that something's listening for the Chuck commands that you're sending. And we're gonna do that right now by going to the Chuck menu and go to start virtual machine. You can see over here, now it's been running. It shows you how long it's been running. Over here in the console window, it tells you some stuff about it. You don't need to know any about it. You can read that stuff if you want to. Uh, as of right now, it's nothing you need to know about. Okay, let's make our very first Chuck program. I want you to type exactly what I type. It, then we're going to type, uh, these are angle brackets. So shift comma, one, two, three. I'm going to make three of those. Open quote, I'm going to say, hello world. Because that's always the first thing you do when you try to learn a new language. And then I'm going to put a end quote, and then I'm going to follow that by these angle brackets like so the closing angle brackets, and then I'm going to end the line with a semicolon. Now that's important. Every statement in Chuck ends with a semicolon like that. Okay, so what, the way you launch this program inside Chuck is you're going to say, or you're going to click this thing that says add shred. I will talk more about what a shred is in another lesson, but for now, just let's just go with it. Press add shred. Okay, now look over here in our console. It printed hello world to your console. So this was a successful Chuck program. And the thing that we just did is we did a print to console command that three angle bracket quote, and then followed by three angle bracket thing is uh, it prints to your console. That's going to be useful later on. We're going to use that a lot. It's helpful for debugging your program and uh, seeing, getting some views into what's happening inside your program. You can sort of communicate to yourself using that. Okay, now we're going to try using a variable. I want to show you how variables work in Chuck. I'm going to type uh, my name, which is Clint, and then I'm going to put in an equal sign and then an, a uh, closing angle bracket, which this thing looks like an arrow, right? And then I'm going to type the word string, and I'm going to say name followed by a semicolon. Uh, you can put in your own name instead of Clint, uh, whatever your name is, go ahead. And then I'm going to delete this out of here and I'm gonna put in a comma and then name. And then I'm gonna run this program again. Let me put in a space here just to see, make it see if it looks a little better. All right, add shred down there it says hello clint looks like i didn't need to put in that space let's try that again i'm going to delete that space i'm going to add the shred again looks a little better there we go all right so let's go into detail what happened in this thing this is a in this first statement here on line one we got four different things here before our semicolon let's talk about each of them what we have here in between the quotes is called a string. It's a string of characters. And then we have what's called the Chuck operator. And then we have string, which is a type name. And we have name, which is a variable name. Let's talk about each of those things in turn. If you try to imagine your computer's RAM as a big set of chunks of memory or little boxes full of memory, then you can give a, a 
place in that memory a name and then you can refer to it later and that's called a variable so what we did here is we named a piece of your computer's ram name and we said i want to go back to that later and we that when we go back to it later we want to use the word name as a sort of signifier for that variable and that's what we, that's what we call a variable now that variable has what's called a type there are uh, different kinds of computer programming languages out there in the world. There, some of them are what are called strongly typed, and others are not strongly typed. Chuck is one that's called that's strongly typed, which means that when you define a variable, you can say this variable will have certain properties, and the programming language can expect it to behave in a certain way. Now, in this case, we named this variable a string, which means that Chuck will expe expect it to behave like a string. Uh, string being a series of characters being letters or numbers and you tend to use strings for things like displaying text to a screen uh, and then we have our chuck operator and chuck is a little interesting this is one of the things that if you're uh, an experienced computer programmer you're going to find this to be a little wild but it's uh, kind of fun after you get used to it the chuck operator assigns things to variables now if you're used to something like c or c plus plus then you're going to be used to seeing the variables defined on the left of an equal sign and then you stash the value into it by saying like name equals Clint but in Chuck things go from left to right because they like to uh, they like to use a metaphor that's something like uh, the cables are being attached like you say like okay you've got like a guitar that goes into a guitar pedal which goes into an amplifier right so that goes from left to right and in Chuck things go from left to right in, in such a way so we take the value and we go, we use the chuck operator to push that value into our variable, which we call name with the type of string. Okay, let's make a sound. To do that, uh, let's get rid of these things and we're gonna give our, pro our program a name here. We're gonna call it our first sound. And this is a good practice. Later on, you're gonna get used to doing this a lot. You're gonna start your programs by uh, doing one of these uh, console logging things, just so you can see what's happening when you have lots of these things going on. Uh, I'm gonna drop down a couple of lines and I'm gonna, it's gonna say S, capital S, I, N, capital O, S, C. And note that that turned purple. That means that it is a type inside the system. And uh, when if a uh, truck knows that something is a uh, type inside the Chuck language, then it'll get, give it a different color. I'm going to uh, give that variable name OSC, and then I'm going to use our Chuck operator again, and I'm going to type the letters DAC followed by our semicolon. DAC stands for Digital Audio Converter, and so what we have here is a another variable, the name of OSC, and it's of type SIN OSC, that's for sign oscillator. We're going to have a separate tutorial about what oscillators are. Uh, for now, let's just go with it, and then we're going to type type what I type exactly. So it's osc dot freq. Oh, I almost did it. F4. So we're going to type 440. Use our Chuck operator. See, that's that programmer thing. I always forget this. And then uh, we're going to say that. We're going to say 0 0.5 Chuck operator to osc dot gain, and then we're going to say one colon colon second chuck operator to now and then we're going to add a shred and you're going to hear, hear something happen <phone rings> hear that we got a sound for one second so what happened here we have our sign oscillator it's going to the digital audio converter we connected it via the chuck operator then we assigned a uh, a value to something called the oscillator frequency and then we assigned another value 0 0.5 to the oscillators gain parameter we're going we can talk a little bit more about object objects and their uh, members in another tutorial and then finally we did this thing which is this very chuckian thing which was that we sent time to now and that caused a sound to occur. Let's do it one more time. All right, that was our first sound in Chuck. In our next tutorial, we're going to see what that sign oscillator looked like in Audacity. We're going to uh, see how we can use Audacity to sort of understand what we're doing with Chuck.